watching the Internet Express. I'm Charula Tabiswas. Welcome to Morning Expresso. Let's begin your day with a big story coming from Maharashtra. Outnumbered after a rebellion in his own party and realizing he will not be able to prove majority on the floor of the assembly, Uddhav Thakre resigned as the Chief Minister of Maharashtra on Wednesday night. Now, this comes shortly after the Supreme Court declined to stay a floor test called on Thursday by the governor. Now, Thakre has not only lost chief ministership after taking a gamble with an unlikely coalition, he's facing the prospect of losing control of a party founded by Bala Sahib and deriving sustenance from the Thakre name. So what's next, you would ask? A source told the Internet Express that top BJP leaders from Maharashtra will hold a meeting on Thursday, which is today, to finalize the next course of action. He added that BJP will stake claim for the formation of the new government under the leadership of Devendra Fadnavis and he will be backed by the Ekna Shinde faction of the Shiv Sena. Meanwhile, the rebels expected to align with the BJP flew on a special spice jet flight to South Goa. Sources said that they were met by Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawan late Wednesday night. Here are the stories exclusive to Indian Express. Opining on the brutal murder of Kanhaya Lal in Udaipur, Pratap Bhanu Mehta writes, the perpetrator's gruesome execution works as a strategy because they now will know we will make a political business out of it. The will to condemn this act has to be accompanied by the commitment to build a free society. Otherwise, Kanhaya's executioners win. Meanwhile, speaking to the Indian Express, Lal's wife Yashoda said, My husband was consistently receiving threats that he would be killed. People would come to his shop and threaten him. If timely action had been taken, he would have been alive. His son Yash added, despite the fact that he was receiving threats, the police did not provide him any protection. Let's have a look at the front page. One of the accused in Kanaya Lal's murder, Ghaus Muhammad, had been to Karachi in 2014 and been making phone calls to Pakistan for the last 2-3 years, Rajasthan Minister of State for Home Rajendra Singh Yadav said. Now, Director General of Police M. L. Lata said Ghaus had gone to visit the office of Dawat e Islami, Sunni Islamic group in Karachi. Among the two options detailed by the Centre for States to borrow to meet the compensation deficit of Rs 2.35 lakh crore this fiscal under the Goods and Services Tax regime, a total of 12 states mostly consisting of BJP ruled states have opted for option 1. Borrowing of 97,000 crore rupees through a RBI facilitated special window. Only one state, Manipur, has so far opted for option two, which involves borrowing the entire compensation deficit from the market. Here are the must reads RFID tax for all pilgrims, unmanned aerial vehicles for surveillance of routes, deployment of over 80,000 security personnel, a multi layer security cover is in place for the Amar Nath Yatra this year. The annual Yatra is taking place after a gap of two years due to the pandemic. It is the first since the centre revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status on August 5, 2019. The first batch of pilgrims will set off from Pahalgam and Paltal base camps on Thursday. Meanwhile, the Dawat e Islami, the group to which Rajasthan police have linked House Mohammad, who killed Taylor Kanaya Lal in Udaipur, is a Sunni Barelvi group that was founded in Pakistan four decades ago. Now, it has chapters in several Western countries. We take a look at the group's origins, ideology, and its growth. In today's Delhi Confidential, BJP General Secretary BL Santosh retweeted a post which had a letter issued from Uttarakhand Assembly Speaker Ritu Khanduri's office. The letter denying reports about the appointment of a media advisor to Khanduri was marked to the BJP General Secretary as well. Suddenly, questions on why an official release from the Speaker's office was marked to a party office bearer were raised on social media. And finally, in today's episode of the Three Things Podcast, we talk about what is known so far in the case of the brutal murder of a tailor in Udaipur, fuel shortage at pumps and the hermit software. That's all for today. For more news and updates, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Internet Express. Thank you so much for watching.